Hey friends, welcome Friday. It's good day. Hot news is great. Yes, news of tech things is happening now. Let's talk about the sponsor for hot news today. Hey friends, today's video is sponsored by Honey. Online shopping should be easy, whether you're at home in your PJs or you're just at work and trying to make things happen quickly. Honey is the platform that you're gonna to wanna to use because Honey is a free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart so that you make sure you're getting the best deal as fast as possible. I especially like to use it whenever I'm shopping at Newegg because Newegg always has deals going on with random different coupon codes and it's always impossible to keep track of them. But with Honey, I just have to click the browser extension and bam, I have been saving money on that. You just have to click apply coupons and it scans for every promo on the internet and you watch the prices drop in your cart. And with anybody trying to build a new RTX 30 series or next gen AMD stuff, Honey's gonna help save you money when you're doing that. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. And specifically, UFD tech users who have installed Honey have saved over $25,000 dollars so far. Let's get that number up to 100,000. So you're going to want to install Honey. It's passing up free money if you don't. It's free and it just takes two clicks to install. You can get Honey for free by going to joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. Again, that's joinhoney.com forward slash UFD tech. Thanks for Honey again sponsoring today's video. So RTX 30 series is a big thing everybody's hoping and waiting for and turns out uh, that while we're getting double the performance in gaming, we're getting double the performance in uh, in uh, ray tracing, at least according to NVIDIA with regards to uh, compared to the RTX 2080, turns out that we're also potentially getting better mining performance. Yeah, yeah, that's still a thing. And that was something that didn't really affect the RTX 20 series because as you all know, it was a prototype generation. The RTX 20 ATI was just never really worth its money in anything. And the, the RTX 20 series just kind of was a early adopter situation for everybody. So we didn't have the giant mining craze really happen with them, but that might be different, especially when it comes to the launch of the RTX 30 series, at least according to a few reports that are out there. Ethereum miners eye NVIDIA's RTX 30 series GPU as RTX 3080 offers three to four times better performance in Ethereum. And it's possible that it does. It is absolutely possible that this happens. However, some reports that I've been seeing have been showing images around the internet of giant boxes of RTX 30 GPUs and look at how many they have. And uh, as, as you can see in this report from the Hardware Times, what we have is a couple corrections. The first two images were from retailers, misleading, sorry. And then this one is, turns out that this is NO3D's testing lab, not a mining farm. And uh, yeah, so, the RTX 3080 being really fast at Ethereum is definitely possible. But the images that you may have been seeing of miners already snapping them up and look, NVIDIA is directly drop shipping to them. It's possible that that might happen. It happened with the 10 series, the 30 series appears to be on par with that type of value and increase that we saw from that. We could be seeing another run on cards for mining, but I just wanna caution you, it does appear like stock's gonna be low for these cards as a whole. So maybe just let's, let's hold out and wait before we start fanning into flame the idea that miners are coming back and re redoing all of the damage that they've done. And even though the RTX 3080 is supposed to retail for $800, you're only gonna be able to pick it up for $1,700 on the used market. We'll see about that. Hold your horses. And more than likely is really good at mining altcoins. But at the same time, gigantic headlines saying, look at all these mining farms. Not yet, not yet, probably hasn't happened. So we'll just, so hold your horses. But we got more RTX 30 series news to talk about outside of mining stuff, which is that the 3080 performance numbers have come out, not only in synthetic benchmarks, but in actual video games. So there was a Chinese Billy Billy Channel Tech Lab that released benchmarks. So showing the Fire Strike and all of the ones that come from 3D Mark, as well as performance in various different video games. So we can go ahead and talk about that. The video has been removed, but Video Cards has kind of aggregated all of the benchmarks and put out a few that they've heard from a bunch of different sources. And what we have is that the 3080 is about 25 to 35% faster than the 2080 Ti in gaming scenarios, ray tracing scenarios, that's generally it. I find it curious that most of the leak benchmarks don't show its performance to the RTX 2080 and only the 2080 Super. I guess we can kind of go based on the 2070 Super's results, which is like kind of close to a normal 2080, kind of. 
And there we do see about a 90% increase over the 2070 Super. So between 70 and 90% is what we're hearing in general. So that is definitely a possibility. But in case you also care about video games, what we're finding is that in certain games, like here, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we do have a 25 to 35% increase at all resolutions tested. But with games such as Far Cry New Dawn, 1080p, uh, well, it's actually really close, which probably has a lot to do with CPU bottlenecks and engine bottlenecks at certain resolutions. And what we see is that it's not until you hit 4K that you're seeing the mass disparity between the 3080 and the 2080 Ti. So 3080 might not necessarily be worth picking up if you're trying to run 1080p stuff, but it also could be if you're trying to hit those super, super high frame rates and certain things, but you're going to need a good CPU to match and you're going to need a good case to match the RTX 3090 because there's a picture of it installed in somebody's case. And this is an ATX case. This is not mini. This is not micro. This is a normal ATX case. And that is a chunky badonker. And just to drive home the point, somebody has a picture of all three right next to each other. They're heckin' big. The RTX 3070 is the size of some people's 2080 Ti's, just to put that into perspective. But you guys already probably know how big the RTX 3080 Ti is because yesterday was the unboxing embargo for the card. There's dozens and dozens of different outlets that have an unboxing embargo, as you can see here. So many people got the card, they were able to unbox it. Not me, Nvidia just doesn't respond to my emails. So I'm going to cry myself to sleep in a corner, but also have to buy one. So I'll just, I'll get mine next week, hopefully. But also yesterday, there appears to be an unboxing embargo for prototypes of the Series X and Series S Xbox. And we also got a leaked image of the box for the Xbox. So yes, my friends, this is the Xbox Series X box. Hopefully that's clear enough to you. And if you have trypophobia, well, then that's a lot of holes that are probably gonna bother you. It says 4K 120 FPS. <laughs> sure, 4K and 120 FPS, not at the same time, either or more than likely at this point. So I'm just picking it apart, but the Xbox Series X box, there you go. There, there it is. Also, it was announced that Xbox is going to be the only console with Dolby support for Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, which does make sense because Sony's kind of doing their own thing for the PlayStation 5's 3D audio. So why would they have a different audio standard coming coming in to that? So uh, it makes sense that this is happening. It's a good HDR experience. I like looking at Dolby Vision's content. So that it's confirmed for these consoles. But what has also been confirmed by game developers is that the Series S, the low spec console, which uh, admittedly is actually quite decent, is not as good as they want it to be because of the memory situation, especially saying that the RAM situation just makes it harder to develop games that are gonna be as good looking as you want them to be because they develop for minimum spec and then kind of scale up from there. So the console with less RAM is kind of gonna determine what we see out of the next generation. Obviously the S is better performing than the base Xbox One, than the base PS4, so we are gonna see an increase, but it's gonna be in a different way than you typically otherwise would. So maybe, Maybe we might see like content that's like Series X exclusive. Probably not going to happen. I would love that. Okay. You just only develop for the high end. Give us video games that you can only play on an RTX 3090. Only, only for the mega elite club. Like how you had that app on the Apple App Store that was just like, you only buy it if you want to spend $1,000 for no good reason. Exactly that for games. Give, give me a game on Steam where it verifies my GPU information. And if I do not have a card that costs over $1,000, I'm not allowed to run it. Yes? No? Anybody in on this? This is a terrible game idea, which let's talk about Ubisoft yesterday because they announced a few different things. Uh, Riders Republic is a extreme sport MMO. That's also coming to get Google Stadia. It's, it's from the makers of Steep. And then it's just going to be like a bunch of events going on at the same time and a bunch of people doing it. Why did we get this instead of an SSX Tricky remake? Why? I don't, I wouldn't expect Ubisoft to give us an SSX Tricky remake. I'm just saying like this, this is, this is not what I wanted. Okay. I personally, that's, that's what I'm saying. And I did want a Prince of Persia remake. Prince of Persia Sands a Time coming out January, 2021. It's going to be made on the Assassin's Creed engine, but I just... Does Assassin's Creed look this bad? I don't know. This looks like a game that was made in PS3. Just that's that's what I'm seeing here. It is definitely a remake. It's definitely an upscale from the previous, 
but I'm having a hard time seeing how this is a game that comes out in 2021 with the next generation of hardware and not something that should have come out eight years ago. I don't I don't see it. What do you guys think of the uh, Prince of Persia remake? I want to hear from you down below. But that's not the only game updates we got. We got Far Cry VR, which is happening, dive into insanity, but it is only happening at zero latency VR locations, which is nine places in the United States. They do have locations. Otherwise, I'm not sure if the VR game is coming to all locations, but it has been confirmed that it's coming to the US one. So, um, you know, I guess that's neat. It's supposed to be in half hour and experience and you can explore the Far Cry 3 map. And then the last one that I care about was Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is essentially just a giant ripoff of Breath of the Wild from Ubisoft. You might remember that we talked about this in a previous episode of Hot News where it was leaked on Google Stadia because they were developing it there. And what we saw was essentially just Breath of the Wild. Uh, this looks slightly like it, but less so than that previous demo did. They actually did make mention to the fact that it got leaked in, the, in this showcase, which was kind of neat, but at the same time, I don't know what to think about it. What do you think of Immortals Phoenix Rising, which sounds like a heckin' like serious title, but the game, at least based on the trailer, is going to be really uh, kind of goofy and sticky, if that makes sense. So I don't know. And then lastly, while we're talking about Stadia stuff, let's talk about GeForce Now because that's the streaming service that matters to me. Ansel is coming to GeForce Now, so you can take super high resolution uh, in-game screenshots of that, which is neat. So that's happening. And you can also sync your PC Steam library on Chromebooks now, which was something that wasn't profitable previously. They added 10 new games, which eh, I don't really care about them, but I'll leave a link in the video description in case you want to find out exactly what those are, but let's go ahead and talk about Ninja returning to Twitch on a multi-year exclusive deal that is finally happening. Uh, this is after Mixer shut down, after it was bought out by Facebook Gaming. Ninja deciding not to re-up his contract with Facebook Gaming, instead kind of shopping around. He seems to be one of the last major stragglers from that platform. So he is coming back to Twitch just like Shroud did. And we're still months out from when Dr. Disrespect got banned from Twitch. We're still no information on that whatsoever, which is just odd, real odd. <sighs> Anyways, speaking of Ninja, let's talk about Fortnite because Nintendo is making a Fortnite Switch. Yes, you can see it right here. It's coming out on October 30th in Europe with no confirmed US release date, but it should be coming out in the US. But in case you want a Fortnite Switch, it's a thing. And while we're talking about Fortnite, let's talk about the Apple versus Epic Games saga because it was reported by Epic Games previously that Apple was no longer going to let them use sign in with Apple as of today. However, yesterday they updated that Apple has said that they can continue to use it with an indefinite extension. So good. Good, I guess. I don't know. And that's what I have to say about this. NASA is going to start working with private companies to collect moon dirt samples. Good. I guess so they want to do this as a way to return to the moon by 2024 looking at moon dirt with Jim Bridenstine saying that NASA is buying lunar soil from a commercial provider it's time to establish the regulatory certainty to extract and trade space resources yes pure capitalism in space let's go trade space resources extract space resources commercialize space okay if I don't see a gigantic billboard on the moon in the next two decades, sad Brett will be sad. And if you don't see a gigantic billboard of today's video sponsor, my friends, don't forget to try out Honey. Join honey.com forward slash UFT tax. Save money on the internet. Save money on Newegg, Best Buy, Walmart, wherever. Get it done. And now it's time for the gigantic billboard of me leaving. Bad segue.